Hi, um, I wanted to take a minute and share with you a way that you can alter a lesson that maybe you've used for years on end and make it a little bit more meaningful and help students meet the standard that you're trying to achieve in a, a more efficient and more meaningful way. Um, the example that I'm going to share with you I have up is one that I did a, a couple years ago with a fifth grade math class and they were having to multiply fractions. But not only did they have to multiply fractions, they had to solve word problems that involved multiplying fractions. And before Kentucky massaged the standards a little bit, they were even responsible for having to write um, multiplication word, uh, word problems with fractions in both parts. So what I did is I set up a slideshow and I had the kids each get onto their own slide and I started off with this um, information slide and I locked this slide in so that they couldn't do anything and alter the slide or alter the directions and we can show you how to do that in another uh, tech tidbit but right now on this one they had their their goals and their information they had to insert a new slide put their name on it um, and in the main box that they inserted and when they inserted I, I made sure they could only get a certain kind of slide when they inserted it and in one box they saw they wrote out their word problem when they were done writing their word problem then students would come back and look through all of the slides that were made after they finished theirs and they would find at least two but most kids solved more to read the word problems and solve them um, now, in this slide, and I want to show you just a couple of the standard possibilities, but there are limitless possibilities in doing this. In this presentation, um, the, the standard we were hitting, even if you go to the modern ones, is solve real-world problems involving multiplication of fractions and mixed number. But as far as the practice standards go, you are hitting a ton of them in this one lesson alone, making sense of problems and persevering and solving them. Um, Reasoning, reasoning abstractly and quantitatively. This uh, third one was a, a, a one that I enjoyed using, but one that I can show you how this helped with that a lot, constructing valuable arguments and critiquing the reasoning of others. But there was modeling, there was all sorts of things that you could do with this one. So let me jump down and show you a couple slides. This is where a basic, where a student would come in um, and just write their word problem. And they might be having problems with it, but as a teacher, you can look at this slide as well, and you can see as they're writing the problem, if they're having issues, then you can help them immediately. Now, the bonus is not only can you help them immediately, but other people as they are going to solve their problems can offer feedback, which is a little bit more meaningful coming from fellow students. Um, and it allows those per people to fix their word problems right away. In a traditional setting, we would have maybe had the kid write a word problem on their page, shared it with a partner, their partner looked at it, yeah, that was great, maybe with one more partner, maybe they got two people to look at it. Maybe they just got frustrated and didn't get anything written because it was on the page. On this one, I didn't have any problem getting people vested in putting in their own slide adding their own story, posting it out there. And when they got feedback, they were a lot more receptive to it. I will show you. Now, you're not going to see his original problem, but down here I had a student that their original problem, when he put it in here and you can see in the comments, the original story he wrote, the first comment he got back was, this is adding and not multiplying. And I know I saw when he got it, he was like, oh, he was able to go back in, fix his word problem, make it a, a whole on a whole number times a, a fraction at least and then people were able to go back and actually solve that word problem now that they had helped him solve it so it's over here in the 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 comments now the other stipulation i gave them when they were done because some people were trying to write super hard word problems in this second box the second box to the side here did not get filled in until other people had already commented on and gave answers. In the second box, towards the end of the lesson, the original author of the problem had to go back and solve the problem and post it in there. 
they could write in the answer. We had some people that did it on their whiteboards and took a picture and inserted it in there so they could show the math that was being done and show the answer to the problem. And this gave the student work a lot more depth and uh, meaning. This was definitely a modification for a lesson. I got more participation. The kids got more feedback. They solved more problems in a short amount of time. And they got that exposure to writing that word problem, which actually is going to go a whole lot further to showing us as teachers, do they understand a multiplication with fraction word problem? Do they understand how they go together? Um, there is a learning curve with it. You know, kids will accidentally delete each other's slides. That is something and that you work on. You show them how to set up one slide, how to put their name on it, how to get back if they accidentally delete someone's slide. The, the wonderful back arrow at the top, that back uh, button to bring those things back. Um, this is just one example. Um, we will share more examples with you down the line on how you can text somebody's tech a lesson and make it more meaningful, not just technology for technology's sake, but technology to help you address the standard better and deepen and strengthen students' learning and ability to meet the standards that we have for them. All right, thank you very much.